Hello everyone, my name is Liam McDonough, and in this video I will be discussing the possible effects of sulforaphane on cancer. The research question that I will be answering today is how does sulforaphane supplementation affect cancer? What is cancer? Cancer is a disease that involves the uncontrolled growth of cells which develop into tumors and are able to spread to other parts of the body. There are two types of tumors, cancerous, also known as malignant, and non-cancerous, also known as benign. Cancerous or malignant tumors can metastasize and spread to other parts of the body to infect tissues, which cause the growth of new tumors. Non-cancerous or benign tumors are not able to spread to other parts of the body like cancerous tumors are able to and they likely will not grow back after being removed. How does cancer de develop? Cancer develops mainly due to genetic changes caused from things like cell division, DNA damage, and genes pe being passed down from parents. During cell division, there is always the chance that errors will occur due to abnormal growth or damage to the, to the cell. Cancer is also caused by DNA damage, an example of how DNA can be damaged involves people staying out in the sun too long, which causes the DNA to be affected by the UV rays from the sun. There are also other ways in which DNA can be damaged, such as exposure to toxins and different chemicals. Cancer can also be encoded in genes that are passed down from our parents. What is sulforaphane? Sulforaphane is a naturally occurring compound that is mainly found in cruciferous vegetables. There are also supplements available that have varying amounts of the compound, along with others that may improve its bioavailability. Sulforaphane's inactive form is a compound called glucoraphanin. Myrosinase is another compound that activates glucoraphanin to become the active form of sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is, is available in high amounts in different types of cruciferous vegetables. Some cruciferous vegetables include broccoli, cauliflower, kale, bok choy, and others. Broccoli sprouts are also very high in sulforaphane, and it, it is widely used in supplements. Sulforaphane supplements come in a few different forms. Sometimes it is sold as pure sulforaphane, it can be sold as glucoraphanin and myrosinase together, or it can be sold as glucoraphanin by itself. Pure glucoraphanin supplements are the least bioavailable, but glucoraphanin is able to be partially activated during digestion in the gut. What does the research say? In order to answer this question, I will be briefly analyzing three articles about sulforaphane and its potential to treat or prevent cancer. The first study aimed to determine if sulforaphane effectively treats carcinogen-induced oral cancer from risk factors, such as airborne pollutants and tobacco. In this study, 10 participants took part in a three, five-day intervention. Bugle cells inside each of the participants' cheeks were collected and frozen on days one, three, four, and five. Participants consumed a beverage derived from broccoli sprout extract on days two through four of each, in each intervention. It was found that sulforaphane activated signaling of the NRF2 pathway and its target genes, which are known to promote carcinogen detoxification. The findings of this research support the claim of the effectiveness of sulforaphane acting as a chemopreventive agent against cancers, specifically head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Ingesting beverages composed of sulforaphane-rich broccoli sprout extracts may be most effective as a chemopreventive agent and the most bioavailable. The second study I'll be discussing aimed to determine whether combining certain dietary compounds could have an inhibitory effect on breast cancer. In this study, cells were treated with sulforaphane, genistein, and sodium butyrate for combined epigenetic effects. 
It was found that all three compounds combined are effective treatments for regulating epigenetic modifications of breast cancer, rather than each compound acting on its own. Combining these dietary compounds may be most effective at limiting the growth and apoptosis of breast cancer cells. The third study I'll be discussing aimed to determine if broccoli soup rich in sulforaphane would change gene expression in the prostate tissue of participants. For 12 months, 49 men received 300 milliliters of broccoli soup every week. The soup was either made with broccoli as a control or made with broccoli with experimental genotypes that contained higher amounts of glucoraphanin. This study concluded that consumption of cruciferous vegetables, high in sulforaphane, and cancer progression have an inverse relationship. This is due to sulforaphane decreasing the expression of oncogenic pathways that have the potential to cause growth of tumors. In conclusion, to answer my research question, sulforaphane has been shown to be an effective compound that may be used to treat different types of cancer. Combined with other dietary phytochemicals, sulforaphane may be more bioactive than it would be alone. Some recommendations that can be used to increase sulforaphane in different types of foods include steaming vegetables for one to three minutes, chopping or chewing sulforaphane containing vegetables, adding ground mustard seeds to food, and taking different supplements containing sulforaphane. Thank you for watching.